Yeah, we are joined live this morning by security expert Manny Gomez. So, Manny, you're a former FBI agent, NYPD officer. Thank you for being here this morning with your analysis here. Good to see you. Thank you to have me. M Manny, police have named a person of interest, right, in this case, 62-year-old Frank James. However, they've stopped short of calling him an actual sub su suspect, although we just had the mayor on saying that they believe they're only looking for one person. Is it semantics? What's right. the significance of it? It's semantics in a way in that uh, they want to be sure. There's a difference between stating there's a, a, it's a POI, a person of interest, as opposed to a suspect. A suspect indicates that uh, they have very strong evidence that this person committed the crime, and uh, they are not 100% sure that this person did it, vis-a-vis -vis maybe they didn't get them on video yeah. actually committing the crime or some other type of very strong evidence, but usually a person of interest indicates that they have their man and that eventually once they apprehend him, that he will not only become a suspect, but he will become uh, somebody who actually performed this, this horrific crime. Yeah. So uh, it, it, it's really semantics. Yeah. So l let's talk about him though. James made some very concerning social media posts about homelessness. Uh, and New York City Mayor Eric Adams. So if it does turn out that he's involved, along with this, what else will they be looking at, the NYPD and other authorities, about what this motive, his motive, the, the shooter's motive could be? Well, again, uh, now we turn into classification. Is this a crime uh, perpetrated by somebody who's mentally ill? Or is this somebody who has a political, ideological, religious motive, and thus it turns into a domestic terrorism uh, classification? At the end of the day, that's semantics, that's semantics as well. A crime is a crime is a crime. People were hurt. People were severely injured. And uh, the city is scared because this person is still on the loose. So uh, what it means is that the priority is still to apprehend this person, get him off the streets, uh, who knows what he could be planning. Obviously, he's a very dangerous person. If you look at his uh, YouTube rants, mm -hmm. uh, this is not somebody who's stable, but that doesn't make him a, a dumb person. He perpetrated this crime and got away with doing it. Obviously, this was uh, premeditated, pre-planned for how long, we, won't, we don't know yet, uh, and it was clearly intentional. So this is somebody who's super dangerous and needs to get off the street first. That's the priority. Then we could go into motive, classification, yeah. things of this nature. And when you say classification, you're talking about calling it an act of terrorism, which some are saying Correct. it was terroristic in nature, meaning people were terrorized on sure. the subway, sure. but not necessarily calling it sure. a, an act of terror terrorism as we yeah. know it, right? Sure. I mean, if, 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 if somebody puts a gun to your head and asks for your wallet, you're terrorized, but that doesn't make it an act of terrorism. But if somebody has a political, ideological, religious mm -hmm. reason, et cetera, for perpetrating said crime, then yes, then you could be classified as domestic terrorism, which brings with it a, a different set of yeah. standards, perhaps federal law, uh, a higher level of incarceration, uh, if, if, if need be. Uh, if, if classified as such. So it's a totally different uh, level of crime, but it's still a crime nonetheless. So either way, uh, it's not if, it's when they find this person yeah. because now they have a name with a picture. Yeah. And hopefully somebody yeah. says, hey, I know him, I just saw him. Right. He's probably staying with this person, that person, or what have you. He will be found in in in. in, in in a not so far future right. yeah. and that and the city needs that because the city needs to feel safe that this person is off the street yeah so police sources are telling us that there were no working surveillance cameras in the subway platform so obviously that complicates the investigation but can you kind of give us a, a, a background on the nypd's domain awareness system i know that they have thousands of cameras all across the city Correct. that could possibly pinpoint where this shooter went. Sure. Uh, domain, d domain awareness along with uh, this, what, what's commonly called as the Circle of Steel, which mm -hmm. is run by Lower Manhattan Security Initiative, LMSI. Uh, they have over 30 to 35,000 cameras 
that are controlled by the New York City Police Department. Uh, the, the, the fact that uh, apparently some of those failed in the subway is a problem that's going to have to be investigated okay. and dealt with, and all those cameras should be up and running 24-07 because we need them clearly for uh, the, the potential of something yeah. like what happened yesterday morning. Uh, that being said, they still are searching and looking and investigating for other cameras, uh, nearby businesses, uh, people that took video tape from their uh, cell phones, et cetera. So they're getting the video that they need to hopefully uh, pinpoint that it was indeed this person of interest that they're looking yeah. for that perpetrated this this crime. Yeah, and you know, New Yorkers uh, not known for their patience. They want everything in a New York Minute, Manny. So is it mm -hmm. odd, I guess, you know, 24 hours now after this attack, that that video from the circle of steel, as you call it, or surveillance video that people may have turned in, hasn't been put out there yet? Well, they put out they put out the an picture image. and a name, and uh, with a picture and a name, if if there's a family member, a colleague, okay. a coworker, a, a neighbor, a friend, uh, somebody who knows them somehow somewhere, they that those persons should come forward, need to come forward, and say, hey, you know, he may be here, there, or wherever, uh, and uh, help the authorities apprehend this person and uh, and and make the city feel safe because obviously right now the, the city especially people that need to take the subways uh don't feel safe knowing that this person is still out at large yeah manny real quick we're running out of time here but we just want to get your uh, your take on the possibility of increased technology being added to the subway system to help detect guns from pa possible passengers going through well, uh, the issue is budget. It's, yeah. uh, is it effective? Is it efficient? I mean, if you put metal detectors or even any other type of technology, you still need a human being vis-a-vis -vis a police officer mm -hmm. to be there to uh, watch this technology and indicate if a person possibly is carrying some sort of weapon or explosive device and stop the person uh, before he or she enters the system. So it's a matter of not only the technology, but ultimately you still need a police officer, ideally, to m monitor uh, yeah. those systems. And th there's really, there's no budget for that. We have over 500 or around 500 uh, stations that need to, would need to be properly monitored. If not, the bad guy would find the weak link. And uh, that's what usually happens. Uh, the subway since 9-11 has been a soft target. We were always worried about it. Yeah. And uh, this happened, uh, and it could happen at any other time with any other individual. Uh, hopefully this is just uh, a, a random individual that is mentally ill and is hopefully apprehended soon and taken off the streets to make the city feel safer. But in the interim, um, more police in the subway is the answer. And we have to find the budget and the resources for that uh, to make that uniformed officer in the subway will go a long way in making people feel safer. All right, Manny. Manny Gomez, thank you so much for joining us today and for giving us all your insight on the security situation as well.